Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Welcome to The Savage Nation. Yesterday was a high point. People have been talking about it. I can't promise the same today. As you well know, each day is different for humans, for the day, for the tides, for the sun, for the moon. Anyone who's consistent day in and day out is kind of acting their way through it. And so I've got to go with with the flow, as they used to say, go with the flow. So we're talking about the swamping of Europe with Muslim refugees. One article after another. Migrants pushing Sweden to the point of collapse from the Gatestone Institute. Germany in grip of Muslim takeover. Even Reuters is noting it. The people are opposed to it. The... The leadership, so-called, of these countries is opposed to the people and in favor of eliminating the culture of the country. And we were talking about this and where it ends and how it affects us. And I wake up today and I see that Turban Durbin is true to his name. He was given the name Turban Durbin a long time ago. He's a senator from Illinois. He represents the largest Muslim district in America. Uh, Dearborn, Michigan is now a predominantly a Muslim city. And Dick Durbin has now called for 100,000 Syrian refugees in the United States of America. Not 10,000, as al-Husseini wants. Not 10,000, as al-Husseini wants, but 100,000. He figures he'll raise the stakes. This is the way liberal gangsters work. Raise the stakes, make it so outrageous, you say, 100,000, they'll take 50,000. Do you think this country should take in more refugees from Syria? Is the primary question today. Now, Turban Durbin got that name because he attacked our troops a number of years ago, comparing them to Nazis during the war in Afghanistan. We know he's a fellow traveler with the opposition. There's no question about it. And I don't mean the Muslim opposition because I, I want to be very clear about it. It's Muslims fighting Muslims right now. It is moderate Muslims such as the King of Jordan, the leader of Egypt, who are fighting the radical insane lunatics. So it's not about Muslims, it's about the fanatics that are being brought in and swept into Europe, hiding in the skirts, hiding under the skirts of the refugees. Now, unto itself, that's a separate issue. How many refugees can we take, especially those who will never, ever assimilate into this culture? Never, in a million years. Never. It's not in their DNA and it's not in their society, in their culture, to, to assimilate to a nation in which they move. I mean, it's as clear as a bell. That's the way it is. And, you know, this is a tough question for all of us because we're all the children of immigrants at a certain point. Everyone in America is an immigrant, including the Native Americans. I know you say that sounds crazy. What do you mean Native Americans are immigrants? Well, we could talk about that at another time. Yes, they had been here before the white man so-called came here. And they had been here for a long time. And I studied this as a young anthropologist. I understand the time frame of the Native American peoples, how long they had been here before the colonists arrived from Europe. I get that picture. But, of course, if you study more deeply and go past the surface, if you do, if you do deep anthropology, you find out that there were traces of people here before the Native Americans. And there were skeletons of Caucasian-looking people that were here before the Native Americans that were thrown out by the Smithsonian because it embarrassed certain individuals but i don't want to go into that history right now sometimes too much knowledge is too much knowledge and it's hard for people to understand where you're coming from all of human history all of human history is about human invasion all of human history is about human invasion write that down because we're being invaded we're being invaded from the south we're being invaded from the north from the east and from the west and you'll say, well, that's the way of all things, and you may get used to it. They're here, they're near, they're everywhere. Now, the question is, why are liberals so quick to embrace this invasion? And why are traditionalists and conservatives like myself so resistant to erasing the borders, language, and culture of this great nation? Is it, is it a self-evident question? 
Or is this too complicated? It is not a classroom. I understand that. I'm speaking with you today as though we're in a classroom holding a seminar on, on the, the, the um, crisis, the refugee crisis facing the world right now, because that's the number one crisis in the world. I know most of us don't think about it every day. We go about our daily business. Money, you know, family, kids, soccer, dentists, cancer, heart attacks, prostate difficulties, fallen arches, broken bones, broken teeth, hair falling out, psoriasis. I get the, I get the picture. So wherever you are, and I try to imagine where you are, many of you are, I don't know where you are. I imagine you're sitting in a garage working on something, listening to the radio. Some of you are on a, in a car listening to the radio. Some of you are at home working on other things, listening on headphones, as though it's underground radio in the ex-Soviet Union, the hidden radio show you're not allowed to listen to. Some are in prisons. I don't know where you are. I know where I am. I know that I, as an immigrant son, think only about the refugee crisis. And for one reason, as an immigrant son, I have to ask myself, I, of all people in the radio, I have to ask myself three times, why do I oppose relocating 100,000 Syrian refugees into this country? Why? Can you answer that question? Can you figure it out? And the embarrassing point is, is that people will always compare the situation to the Jews in the Holocaust. I mean, no, it's, it's the underlying motif of the entire liberal establishment. The underlying, the underlying, the substrata, rather, the substrata of this entire argument and the emotional substrata of this entire argument is based upon the Jews under Nazi Germany. And it's a false, it's a false argument. It's a false one on many levels. Many levels it's a false one. And I'm sure you can figure out why it's false and why the narrative is being used by those who want to flood America with refugees for their own reasons. Lutheran Family Services is doing it only for the greed. They're demanding 100000 because they make money off it. Baptist Family Services, they're doing it because they're greedy. They make money off it. Catholic Family Charities are doing it because they make money off it. So you can figure out what I'm saying to you. There's a lot of self-interest. There's a lot of greed. But the, the comparison to the Jews fleeing Germany in the Holocaust is a faulty analogy for a number of reasons, which I don't think I have to spell out to you unless you're that thick and you, and you really do think it's the equivalent of Jews running from the gas chambers, because it's not Jews running from the gas chambers at all. This is Muslims running for a better way of life at your expense. Because the fact of the matter is, wherever they go, Take a look at it. Look at Sweden. Look at Norway. Look at Denmark. Look at Germany. Look at the trail of filth. Take a look at it. How can we take care of refugees when we have so many indigenous poor in this country right now? What, is everybody here rich? All of a sudden, the country is rolling in money? All of a sudden, Obama has cle cleared everything up and there are no poor in this country who need the help of the government? How in the world can you not see that there's something wrong with this picture? Now we have the issue of uh, tolerance. And, uh, many years I've preached how ultra-tolerance is killing us. I've told you that a hundred times. And we have a brainwashed generation of drug children raised on Adderall, marijuana, other toxic compounds, and outright brainwashing in the government schools where they believe in things that are false as though they are truths. They have no religion. Their religion is liberalism. And the doxies of, relig of, of, of uh, liberalism, I can give you the Ten Commandments of liberalism. I can make them up on the spot if you'd like. One, man is evil and poisoning the earth. Two, the earth is a living organism and needs to be protected. Three, all white people are racist. Four, all people of color are good. Five, all refugees should be allowed in. Six, there are uh, people make too much money. It should be taken from them. Uh, I can go down the list. All you got to do is listen to Bernie Sanders, and you can fill in six, seven, eight, nine, and ten commandments right there. And so you understand you have a brainwashed youth vote. You have a drugged youth vote. You have immigrants who want things for free that are being uh, legitimized in an illegitimate way. Jerry Brown, for example, in his criminal ways 
has now allowed the Department of Motor Vehicles in California to automatically register illegal aliens so that they guarantee not a one-party system in California, which is what we already have, but a no-party system. Just, a, just an autocrat. No party necessary. Just an autocrat in Sacramento. An autocrat in, in, in Washington. So you're watching the dissolution of democracy itself under the guise of diversity. Diversity is destroying democracy. That's the opening to my show. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. So my opening monologue was about diversity destroying democracy. Very clear, isn't it? Do I make things clear enough for you? Diversity destroying democracy. It's a major theme in Government Zero, which, by the way, has gone to number one under politics on Amazon before its publication next Tuesday. It's already number one on politics, which means that people who are polit political want that book. Now, I have a, compa excuse me, a correction. Durban is from Illinois, not Michigan. Very important that you know that. But he is extremely and deeply connected to the Muslim community in Dearborn and elsewhere. That's also important to know. Now, <clears throat> last night I saw a show on American History Channel entitled uh, Muslims and the Nazis. They did it. I didn't complain to them. And they talked about al Husseini, the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem, during World War II and how he collaborated with Hitler and how the Muslims wanted to build gas chambers in the Middle East to exterminate the Jews. Now, this should be a wake-up call to all of the liberals who hate Israel, the liars, many of whom are Jewish, by the way, who say that they're not anti-Semitic because they're Jewish themselves, but they're anti-Zionist. What these fools should know is that al Husseini wanted to exterminate the Jews in the Middle East before Israel was even created. I'm talking about 1940, 41, 42. There was no Israel. There was no Israel. There was no state of Israel. Al-Husseini, a Muslim, worked with Hitler, got the plans for the gas chambers at the Chau, and wanted to build gas chambers in the Middle East and round up all the Jews in every country in the Middle East and exterminate them. Did you know that? They didn't teach you that at Harvard? All of you geniuses on the Middle East? who are oh so preposterously in favor of the poor oppressed Palestinians. You didn't know that about their history, did you? You don't know that their end goal is extermination. You know nothing about this. You also don't know the equation of the Middle East. We keep hearing that the Jews kicked the Palestinians off their own land, and that the Palestinians are the underdog, and how can you not identify with the underdog, and the Jews are evil imperialists who stole the land. I've heard it all. I've analyzed it all, and I'm sure there are many cases of that being true in the Middle East, in, in Israel, by the way, per se, uh, but there are many cases of that not being true. In many cases, the Arabs gladly sold garbage land to the Jews, garbage, useless, rocky hillsides that they could not cultivate for, for thousands of years that the Jews made flour and grew crops on. And what you also don't know, but that they didn't teach you at Yale or Harvard, is that at the same time that Israel was created, the Muslims went on a war path in northern Africa. Libya, Libya ring a bell, Algeria. Look at the countries in, of uh, North Africa. Jewish, Jewish people had lived there for a thousand years. Guess what your friends, the Muslim di Muslims, did to the Jews? They stole their land and kicked them out of the country. 700,000 Jews were thrown out of northern Africa. Jews had lived there for 500 years, rather. 500 years. Think about 500 years. Their land was stolen, property stolen, bank accounts stolen, and they were driven out. And where did the Jews go? They went to Israel. It was the only place on earth that would take them. So the next time you get up and smoke your, your liberal lies, get the whole picture right here on the Savage Nation. So now having said that, let's move on to what's happening in America. You're being pushed aside by the social engineers called Al Hussein Obama. Al Hussein Obama 
is doing to this country a damage that you'll never understand and